Shalom Israel. This is Elder Yuda Yasharel. Last night I did a video, this video, and for some reason there was no sound, so I'm going to make another attempt. This is very, very important. Y'all notice, or have you noticed, that all the world events <clears throat> around the world concerning this war, it's not de-escalating. It's escalating. At this very moment, the United States have declared war on 27 or 28 countries. So let's get started. <clears throat> the title of day of this lesson is, It's Going Down. You see this picture right here? We're going to see this. This generation is going to witness this event right here. We're going to be in the book of Joel, starting at chapter 1. <clears throat> the word of the Most High that came to, the, to Joel, the son of Bethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers. In other words, he's saying, have you ever seen anything such as what your generations to come is about to see? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That generation is us. Joel is talking about the present day. People, this thing is a matter of weeks or months away. They are already talking about nukes. America has said they will not put boots on the ground in, in Ukraine. <clears throat> like always, they lied. They have boots on the ground. This is the reason Russia has went to their nuclear weapons. If Russia strikes with nukes, you can expect China and North Korea to follow suit. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. This means there will be no food. There will be no food. So Israel, y'all need to prepare. Y'all really need to prepare. Stop taking this for granted. It is going to happen. And the one thing you do not want is to be caught without food and water. This is going to be the worst mankind has ever seen. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong, and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. That means they have stripped the bark from the, the fig tree. He hath made it clean and bare, and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. There is no bark left on that tree. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Most High. The priest, the Most High's ministers, they mourn. The field is wasted and land mourneth. For the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil is languished. No 
food and no water. This is serious, y'all. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. How, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. No food. <clears throat> this is Joel. He saw this day way back in his day. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languished. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests, howl, you ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my Father the Creator. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of the Creator. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Most High Creator, and cry unto the Most High. Alas, for the day, <clears throat> for the day of the Most High is at hand, that is today, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. It's coming, people. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our Creator. The seed is rotten under their collards. The garden, the gardeners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down. For the corn is withered. He keeps warning, no food. There won't be any food. How do the beasts groan? I want y'all to pay close attention to this part because we're talking about two separate types of beast. How do the beasts groan? These are your cattle. The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. It's all gone. Even the cattle have nothing to eat. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. Everything is gone. Y'all try to picture this. This is going to happen. You're going to see this. We're all going to see this. O Most High, to thee will I cry. For the fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. These nuclear bombs are going to burn everything within a two to three hundred mile radius. For the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. <clears throat> the beast of the field, now this beast of the field, has hands and feet. It is a being, not a cattle. These are the beasts that look like man, have hands and feet, and they work right beside Israel. We talked about this in a previous lesson. So there's a difference between this beast and this beast. This beast is cattle, animal. This beast looks, like, looks just like man. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee. Now these particular beasts here are our slaves. These beasts, they cry unto our creator. They believe and trust in our creator. They pray unto our creator. The Most High promised Israel slaves. This is where they're going to come from. In the beginning, in Genesis, these beasts were created to serve us. But that script got flipped. And now we serve them. And it's about to flip again. Only this time, it will be as it was originally intended. These beasts will serve us. 
But these are not cattle. These beasts in verse 20, they have hands, they have feet, they have homes. They work right alongside of Israel. <clears throat> the beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up. And the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. <clears throat> Chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Most High cometh. For it is near at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess. These this is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to look like when these nuclear bombs go off. The plume will reach miles into the sky, into the stratosphere, which will block off the sun and the stars, which will, re which will render us in total darkness. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like. There has been never nothing like this that's about to happen. Neither shall be any more after it. There won't be anything like this ever happen again. We're talking the end of life on this planet as we know it. <clears throat> Even to the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. These are bombs going off, people. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. These are now talking about the military personnel. Like the noise of chariots, these are your jets, your helicopters, missiles flying through the air. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, they shall leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, nuclear bombs. As a strong people set in battle array, they are out there preparing doing this at this moment this is talking about the war between russia and ukraine and it will definitely spread before their face the people shall be much pained all faces shall gather blackness they shall run like mighty men they shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march every one on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. I'm sorry, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. <clears throat> they shall run to and fro in the city. It's gonna be chaos. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Y'all have seen military drills, uh, SWAT drills, police drills. This is what they do in training. Only this is not training. This is what they're going to be doing. They're going to be crawling in through every opening they can find, looking for whoever they can kill. The earth shall quake before them, nuclear bomb. The heavens shall tremble, shall tremble, nuclear explosion. The sun and the moon shall be dark. The plume itself from the nuclear explosion will block off the sun and the stars. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Most High shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Most High is great and very, very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore, also now, saith the Most High, turn ye even to me with all your heart. People, repent. Whatever you're doing, you know it's not right, stop it. Go back to the Most High. 
You do not want to be caught up in this. <clears throat> and with fasting and the weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Most High, your Creator. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering, and a drink offering, unto the Most High your Creator. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Most High, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare the people, O Creator, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? This is Joel uh, petitioning the Most High to not let this happen. But it's going to happen. Then will the Most High be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Most High will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. This is after the fact. This is after all of this chaos has passed. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, that's Russia, and drive him into a land bearing and desolate that's the u.s with his face toward the east sea that's the united states and his hinder hinder part toward the utmost sea the u.s backside faces the gulf of mexico the pacific ocean its front side faces east and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his state shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the most high will do great things be not afraid ye beasts of the field we're talking about the beast with hands and feet not the beast that walks on fours on all fours be not afraid ye beasts of the field for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Most High, your Creator. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. He's going to give us back everything that these invading armies ate up. They, when, he's talked, when he's talking about the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, these are reference to these military men. They are going to pillage and they're going to take whatever food there's a, that is available. There won't be nothing left for you. And the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied <clears throat> and praise the name of the Most High, your Creator, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Most High, your Creator, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. We've seen some of these wonders when we were in the de Arizona desert. Fortunately, there were witnesses out there that backed us up because they saw it too. The sun shall be turned into darkness. That's a, middle, that's a nuclear explosion. And the moon into blood. When you see that plume go up, there is going to be a bright red glow. That's where the redness come from. The moon will turn into what looks like blood before the great and terrible day of the Most High come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, that is these beasts of the field that are going to be our slaves and us, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Most High shall be delivered. This is where our slaves are going to come from. These are the beasts of the field that was originally supposed to be our servants. They have hands and they have feet. They look human, but they're not. They're beasts. They're very intelligent beasts, but beasts none the same. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Most High has said, and in the remnant whom the Most High shall call. Chapter 3. For behold in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. This is Hosea. I mean uh, Joel. He's prophesying the scattering of the tribe of Israel. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. People, this is what's going on in this very moment. He has put hooks in their jaws and drawing them into battle, just like he said he would. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and have sold the girl for wine that they may drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all of the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense and if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my goodly pleasant things. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of England, they came to Africa, they stole silver, gold, and right now they hold the biggest diamond in the world. They took that from here. They didn't buy it. They stole it. This is what he's talking about. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and return them your, comp your recompense and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the land of the children of Judah and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off for the Most High has spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, 
prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. This is the most high saying, you want, a, you want war? Go, get your best and bring them. Let's do this. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Who is the weak? These Russia has a military force that consists of a bunch of kids. They have no military experience. They have no battleground experience. This is their absolute first time in the art of war. So they're weak because they have no backing from experience. But they have to tell themselves that they're strong. They are trying to overcome their fear. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourself together round about. Thither cause my mighty ones to come down, O Creator. Let the heaven, let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. All you military personnel, Pakistan, North Korea, China, Russia, Ukraine, America, all of them, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Here we go again, y'all. How many times is this made? It is going to be nuclear war. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Most High also shall roar out of Zion. And utter his voice. From Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. When that nuclear bomb goes off. It will shake the planet. The nuclear bombs we had in the days of John F. Kennedy are nothing compared to the nukes they have today. But the, Lord, but the Most High will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. The Most High will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Most High, your Creator, dwelling in Zion, <clears throat> my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Creator, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt, that's America, shall be a desolation. Y'all get this. Egypt, that's America, shall be a desolation. It will be completely and totally annihilated. And Edom, that's Saudi Arabia, shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood, those of us that have been mixed with uh, the heathen's blood because of rape. What did he say? I will cleanse their blood that, have, that I have not cleansed. For the Most High dwelleth in Zion. People, the reason that I did this lesson is because 
I'm keeping up with world events. And I, I went to the book of Joel because everything that he's talking about, I'm seeing today. I mean, this, this, this thing is right at your door. I mean, people think we got 10 years, 20 years. They're talking about what they're going to do in, 2000, uh, 20, in 2030. Man, you don't have that kind of time. You don't have 10 years. You don't have 5 years. Look at, look at what's going on around you. This, this window is closing. This window of opportunity, the window of repentance is closing fast. The Most High bless you, Israel, and I hope that all of you find everything you need for preparation. Prepare, Israel. It's going down. Shalom.